wanna say goodbye, yeah. Want your skin on my skin just one last time if I can't have you. How's it going everyone? My name is Dan, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a little bit of a walk around of my 1996 Land Rover Discovery. I've owned it for about 10 years and it was totally standard when I bought it. It's a bit different now so let's have a look. So the tyres are BF Goodrich KO2s, all terrains. They're pretty new, I've only recently got them and uh, can't fault them, they're really quiet on the road. I went with all terrains because I'm doing quite a lot of road mileage with the caravan on the back and um, it's also great for green laning as well. I don't really need mud tyres for going through muddy bogs or anything like that. I don't tend to do much of that at the moment. It's mainly gentle green lanes, so these are perfect. The wheels are standard Land Rover steel wheels. Slightly deeper, I think they're a minus 35 offset. So that gives you a bit more width in your uh, stance. Other than that, pretty standard. Up front we've got the Genuine Land Rover bull bar and standard front bumper um, Whipack spotlights The headlights you might notice are custom I don't know if you can tell They are standard headlights with the round Defender LED lights mounted into them and then little side lights there Moving down we've got the fog lights that are again custom made When I bought the car these fog lights were missing so I mounted them in there and looking underneath you can see the Rattlex diff guards and standard arms. I've got a adjustable panad rod under there. Not sure if you can see it. And a TD5 front grille. Just uh, looked a bit nicer so I thought I'd fit that there. I've also got the raised Land Rover lettering just to modernise the front end up a little bit. Yeah. Really pleased with the, the look of the front end. Moving round we've got the snorkel painted in Raptor and a custom decal just stuck on there and I don't know if you can see for the sun we've also got some lights on the roof as well some cab marker lights a bit of uh, American style. Moving round under here, the suspension, we have heavy duty Rattlex shock turrets and dislocation cones. The springs are Britpart heavy duty plus two inch and the shockers are terra firma. I think they're a standard height terra firma. And then we've also got the terra firma extended brake lines as well. Um, standard Land Rover arms. Just painted yellow. Moving round on the rear again, brick part heavy duty plus two shocks, uh, springs, plus two springs, standard terra firma shocks, and I've actually got the cranked rear radius arms. Around the back, we've got a heavy duty steel rear bumper. Again, painted in a truck bed liner. We have tail like grills, the rear ladder, going up to the roof rack with the two work lights. Obviously the spare, standard tow bar, clear tail lights. Um, also, bottle opener, always come in handy. Around the other side we've got the CB aerial mounted to the roof rack that comes through a cable gland here into the roof. Now, this is never leaked so yeah, can't fault that. And it's just a half rack 
It's actually a Discovery 2 half rack that I have uh, modified with a mesh top. The side steps are a standard Discovery side step that I have trimmed down. I had to cut them down once I did the arch trim. It's got the flared arches and the camel cut allow the wheels to go up into the arch for off-roading. Now the standard side steps were too long when I'd done this and the wheels were rubbing so I had to cut them down. Take a look inside. Inside, pretty standard. A couple of little bits and bobs. We've got the Discovery 2 cup holders. Fantastic modification that. I use them all the time. The cup holders that are in here, uh, they're just naff. They get in the way you, when you've got your cups in, you can't get to the controls. And that's actually broken, doesn't open properly now. Um, window switches, I have fitted a voltmeter there so that I can keep an eye on my alternator and my battery. And I've replaced the cigarette lighter with a two USB port. Looking up, we've got the mud, I think it's mud stuff dash pod with a boost gauge and an oil temperature and an oil pressure gauge. These two aren't actually wired in, but the boost gauge is. And we've also got the um, spotlight switches and other switches there. And obviously the GoPro mount. Um, steering wheel, standard, everything standard really. Another GoPro mount and phone mount. Up in the headlining, if we can get it to focus. There we go. In the headlining we have the standard alarm, standard light. These lights aren't very good so I will be upgrading that in the future. We've got a CB which is uh, all hardwired in. Um, standard map things and all that kind of stuff. And I've also fitted a switch here. You do that and these come on. We've got one either side. Little lights just for reading maps and things like that. Over here we've got custom made don't know what you call it really. Uh, it's just a piece of plastic painted green with Discovery stuck on but just changes the interior a little bit from everyone else. We've got the Exmoor trim half leather seats and they are throughout and obviously car seats because it is the family bus and my camera gear and stuff um, up here this is um, rope <laughs> so looking from the back of the car this rope is we have them on both seats and what we do is we took the children's tablets in there and they can watch a film on journeys saves paying out for big expensive DVD players and all that kind of stuff they've both got their own tablets we just put movies on and games and they can watch it as long as they want really connect it to our Wi-Fi on our phone and we've got infinite amount of films to watch just a simple rope <laughs> So I've decided I've had enough of the camera, I'm now recording this on my phone. The headlining is um, standard headlining with the foam and the fabric taken off and just painted in stone chip. I did this temporary because it was all hanging down and it just looked horrendous. So I decided to rip it off and just paint it for now. I am going to recover it in a nice maybe black suede or something like that, I haven't decided yet. Yeah, that's the interior. Um, again, that's probably my favourite mod from the interior. Um, speakers, aftermarket speakers, because the Land Rover speakers are pants. And uh, Exmoor trim seats really transform the interior. It's quite a nice place to be, really. Moving round to the rear of the car. 
I've made a chest of drawers just to allow me to carry extra bits. In here I keep all my tools, sockets, spanners, screwdrivers, everything. Everything I'd need to do any essential repairs on the road. Um, I always carry my tools with me and I used to have a toolbox in the back but whenever I went around corners it'd fall over and all the tools would go out everywhere and also there wasn't anywhere for Jazzy to lay so now she has her own little space and the tools are still in the car. I am going to remake this because it, it's not great. I only made it out of thin plywood and MDF and it, it doesn't open and shut very well. So I am going to remake that. This side is another storage container. Um, I keep a stove in there and things like wheel bearings and little bits and bobs that I might need. And then I made this just for putting things on. So when you're out, you can pop your jet boil on, make a brew and uh, it's a nice table. The only downside is when you've got a trailer on the back, the door doesn't open fully. So it's very hard to get into this drawer. So I might have to rethink that in the future. Uh, we've also got the dog guard with um, a couple of ropes. This is my tow rope that you might have seen on the front of the car. I've decided to take it off. And this was actually given to me by somebody that I've done a bit of work for. He said he'd uh, towed a 16 ton Unimog out with this rope. So I don't think I'll be snapping it. Um, I've got an ax and a shack shackle. Got that for if I uh, need to go to the toilet. <laughs> I'm only joking. It's for while we're uh, potty training our, our eldest. Um, she seems to be all right, but if she needs to go to the toilet, it's there. Saves her doing it in a car seat. This Discovery doesn't come with the um, seven seats in the back it just has these little cubby boxes that are looking a bit tired now um, they've been bashed about and uh, they're starting to crack and get broken and all that kind of stuff i do have plans for maybe making some gullwing doors on these windows because if you look around here you can see the rubbers are perishing and these are actually larger than the five door windows so the rubbers for these windows are becoming very hard to get hold of. So to combat that, I was thinking of just gull wing doors and uh, I don't know, just to get rid of their rubber and it'll be easier access for in the back. So I think the only other thing that we can do is have a look under the bonnet. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Now I have modified the bonnet a little bit, mm -hmm. now has gas struts, which now opens on its own. So there's one here and one over the other side. Just frees up this area so when you're working you haven't got this, you haven't got that in the way. And it looks better as well. Now under the bonnet we've got silicon hoses on the intercooler pipes and down there on the turbo. I've got an EGR valve there, um, not EGR, EGT gauge. Um, I just haven't fit it yet in the car. I did have one but it broke so the uh, sensor's still in there. Around here we've got the airbox, standard airbox with the snorkel fit into it. This is just modified the intake we used to be there and it used to come through and out the wing there. Now it's all sealed up and it goes in here in the side, which then comes through and out and up the snorkel. We have the axle and diff breather kit. They go through to the gearbox, the axles and the uh, wherever else and they come through here and I've just wired them into here 
so that there's no pipes showing everywhere. Um, recently replaced the radiator. You won't believe how knackered the old one was. Um, so it's got a new radiator. I've pretty much replaced everything on this engine. Um, water pumps, alternators, radiators, head gaskets, all sorts. So most of it is pretty new-ish. So down there you can see there's an upgraded alternator. Um, I think it's a 120 amp alternator. Standard is 100, just to give us a bit more um, charging power. Um, the water pump was replaced a couple of years ago. Um, tensioner pulley, that was replaced. Head gasket was done when I first got the car. Um, like I say, I've just replaced the radiator and the expansion tank. Um, in the heat of summer, we started getting some coolant problems, so I swapped it out. Um, had a new lift pump attached. Um, that was done a couple of years ago. And um, it has also got the um, boost ring from 4 by 4 by 4 I have got the pin, but I took it out before um, because it was making the clutch slip. Now I've replaced the clutch. I just haven't got around to putting it back in. Um, the infamous rocker cover leak. I can't seem to fix that. I've replaced the gasket about 100 times and it still leaks. So other than siliconing it up, I don't know what else to do. Um, I don't really want to silicon it though, so just let it leak. Um, around here, obviously fuel filter and all that kind of stuff. Um, the wiring is a bit of a spaghetti junction. I know where everything is and I know what it is. Um, it does want tidying up. I do have plans for it, but just one of them things getting round to. Um, the battery, just a standard battery. I think it's a 95 amp hour or something like that. Can't remember. Yeah, other than that, it's all pretty, uh, pretty standard. Yeah. Let me show you on the roof rack. Uh, you might like that. <laughs> so up on the roof rack, we have a couple of work lights, helipad, and a mesh thing for standing on. And you might be able to see the cab marker lights there. I'll uh, I'll put the lights on and show you the lights. Move around the front. And up top, we've got the cab marker lights. Obviously, one's not working in the middle. No matter what I do, there's always one that doesn't work. We've got the side lights. The little side lights mounted there. I'll turn the full beams on. And those are the full beams. And that is pretty much it. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like some things or if you want to see more of something, let me know and we'll see what we can do. Obviously, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, let me know if you want to see more of this type of video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.